dear students welcome back to bosco campus session youtube channel of kottayam don bosco college i am rania faculty member of pg department of english today i am here with the paper 20th century malayalam literature in english translation which is the core paper for semester 3 ba english students in this class we are uh, we are beginning a new poem it's a long poem written by mylopulli sridharamenon and this poem is titled sahyende magan in this paper we are discussing the translated version of malayalam literature so the translated version of this poem sahyende magan under the title son of sahyen and this translation was made by bini bs so this poem is actually written in malayalam language by mylopulli sridharamenon so let's begin with the introduction of the writer mylopulli sridharamenon Vailopulli Sridharamenon as you know he is one of the important writers in Malayalam literature he is an indian poet in malayalam literature known for his verses kannikoyithu kudiyojikal maambalam etc he was the founder president of purogamana kala sahitya sangha initially he wrote under the pen name sri it was he who made a transition from romantic poetry towards Uh, towards modern poetry in malayalam literature he was awarded with a lot of prizes like kerala sahitya academy award kendra sahitya academy award vaelar award and also odakural award along with p kunjiraman nair and idasheri govinda nair it is vailopulli sridharamenon had made a, a radical change in the history of malayalam poetry his magnum opus the work kudiyojikal it is considered as his magnum opus and the most notable poem maambalam several times this poem maambalam is recited in many stages so this poem is written by vailopulli sridharamenon and here we are going to learn the poem sahyende magan so the poems sahyende magan maambalam padayaligal etc is collected in his collection kannikoyith now let's go through some of the important points about the poem the poem son of sahyen was originally written in malayalam language under the title sahyende magan as i told you this poem was written by vailopulli sridharamenu It was originally published in 1944 and later collected in his collection Kannikoyithu. It depicts the wild rumination of a tusker. So in this poem a tusker is remembering his childhood memories. The title of the poem is Son of Sahyen. Sahyen here refers Sahyadri. Maybe the ancestral home of this tusker is Uh, one of the forests in sahyadri mountain so that is why the title the son of sahyen so the mind of the tusker wanders into the forest into the deep forest so in, in his childhood days he used to jostle around the forest there he have a lot of memories at some point of the poem he loses touch with the reality and he became a victim of his fantasy now let's begin the poem now let's check the stanza wise explanation of the poem the son of sahyen the son of sahyen actually uh, published in 1944 and later included in the collection of vailopulli titled kannikoyit so this poem depicts the wild rumination of an elephant so let's begin the poem first stanza In the temple courtyard tall torches shed undulating radiance the festival goes on so he begins the poem by explaining a temple courtyard so it is in a temple courtyard a festival is going on so that courtyard is decorated with bright torch light second stanza surging streams of gold in front of elephants 15 black rocks resplendent with bubbly stronglets So in second stanza he says that in that courtyard there stands 15 black rock like elephants they were wearing they were wearing golden rivulets of caparisons so 15 black rock like elephants are standing there they were wearing golden rivulets so it is a quite common scene in the festival the festival days of temples so a group of uh, a group of 
elephants are arranged on a row so that's a quite common scene so like a dappled valley in full bloom lingers a crowd wrapped in rhythms their heads swaying with the music of many an interesting many an instrument playing in unison so in the third stanza he is explaining that a tusker son of sahin that is a tusker he is remembering that like a dappled valley in full full, full bloom lingers the crowd wrapped in rhythms their heads swaying with the music of many an instrument playing in unison so there stands a big crowd who were swaying their heads in the rhythm of the musical instrument playing in that temple courtyard that scene it looked like a valley in bloom so this scene remembers for that tusker son of sahin he remembers a valley in full bloom and in the fourth stanza moving on to the fourth stanza men sit in groups chatting away relishing the pleasure of chewing betel some comment noti is the tusker standing there in the middle so some of them some of them from the crowd they commented so while chewing the betel leaves they commented that the tusker which stands in the middle that is noti so noti is the tusker standing there in the middle some of them commented while chewing the betel leaves he commented noti is the tusker standing there in the middle and in the next stanza evil spirits whisper in the deep caverns of the tusker's great forehead on which a great a golden idol reigns the divine so it is quite common seen that usually in festivals in the courtyard there stand some uh, elephants so the golden idol as well as the priest sit on the top of this elephant so here also it is uh, valuably says that the devils may whisper in the large forehead of the tusker so the large large forehead here here valuably such as mastagam anayada mastagam so the devils may whisper in the large forehead of the tusker where the golden idol reigns so in on that tusker's forehead the golden idol reigns and the next stanza not fully drained is the juice from the last rutting season yet he stands majestic in the festive row what lofty magnificence so in the sixth stanza he says that even though the earlier rutting juice rutting juice means anira madapad so even though the rutting earlier rutting juice is no drained he is forced to line up in the temple courtyard but still his look he is majestic to see so his look he is very really majestic fantastic so he is forced to line up even though that rutting juice has not drained yet he is forced to stand in that uh, in that he forced to line up in the temple courtyard depicts the pathetic situation of a wild tusker who is forced to line up even though uh, even if the rutting juice has not yet drained off so moving to the next stanza seventh stanza is each moment each moment those tusk matchless in might may be yearning to accomplish many a feat adventurous so he is explaining that maybe that big tusk of the tusker thirst to embark on great adventures so maybe that's it that uh, tusker's big tusk it may thirst to embark on great adventures to go for great adventures But next answer perhaps bloody dreams surge in his eyes a frantic trunk digs the soil the helpless priest shudders in terror so it is a quite common scene that in festivals usually the priests of the temples are sitting on the sitting uh, on the top of the elephant along with the with the golden idol so here uh, the poet wilopoli says that his eyes may be seeing some bloody dreams the eyes of the tusker they may be seeing some bloody dreams or the trunk is digging on the ground the poor priest he's trembling on the top of that elephant next stanza let the ocean of noise heave unbated and the walls of fire seethe let the crowd jostle around 
So in the ninth stanza, it is explained that in the ocean of that sound and burning wars, let the crowd jostle around. So in usually in festival, it is quite common seen that the crowd may be the crowd may be jostled because of the ocean of the sound from many many musical instruments or the burning balls the light light from that uh, from the walls of the from the four walls of the tem uh, temple the walls may be burning so in that ocean of sound and burning walls let this crowd jostle around stanza let the strong fetters bind him to pillars let the frail mahout keep the spiky pole land his body so in the 10th stanza vilopoli is explaining that the let, let the mahout mahout means in malayalam papan mahout bind the elephant's chain on the pillar and keep his pole landing on his body so in that courtyard what is happening this mahout is binding his chain his chain is binding on the pillar of the of the temple and mahout kept his poles landing on the body but in the 11th and 12th stanza what is happening let's see the 11th and 12th stanza the perilous tusker's lofty brain is darkness now a glow with the moony blaze of lunacy consider at least any of these the reckless tusker makes its way swaying large spotted ears freedom flags in imagination so in the 11th stanza the great tusker he uh, he never considered any of this that is these in the dark races of lunatic brain so as i told you earlier the rotten juice has never drained up so the great tusker never considered any of the scene so in in his mind in his brain any of the scene in the in his mind in the dark races of his lunatic brain so his brain is lunatic so he never considered any of the scene and he is simply traveling in his imagination waving the great ears of freedom flag so here vilopoli compare his ears into freedom flags so he is traveling in his own imagination he never considers the happenings in the temple courtyard he is traveling in his own imagination next stanza through the playful pathways of its younger days on the foothills of sahyan rich with spring in full bloom so in the 13th stanza the tusker is remembering his childhood memories in his youth during the spring time he used to jostle on the foothills of sahyan so who is he he is the son of sahyan sahyan is the forest he is the son of sahyan so he is remembering his childhood memories on the following stanzas and on the 14th stanza answer for an elephant of my metal is there a better heaven to roam than this verdant valley ever alive and abundant he is asking the question whether there is a better place than this valley to roam about for an elephant like him so he is asking this he is he consider this sahyadri is the best place for him so he is asking the question is there any other place or is there a better place than this valley to roam about in the 15th stanza the mountain vaga trees heavy with blossoms shower rubies the mountain breeze caresses the massive forehead so while he was in the sahyadri in his childhood days this mountain vaga trees that is in full bloom shed rubies on him and the breeze from the mountain came to caress his forehead so that was the time of freedom he is remembering that in the 16th stanza the tender leaves softer than silk and delicate shoots of reeds and bamboo make for a delicious feast so what was the feast in during that time so while he was in sahyadri the delicate shoots of reeds and bamboo prepared delicious feast for him in that sahyadri so is he still remembering the delicious feast of sahyadri while he was standing in the temple courtyard and in the stanza 17 the hands of playful forest brooks invite him with water pure surpassing celestial nectar so sahyadri's wild brooks invite him by carrying water that excels like nectar so sahyadri's water is here compared with nectar so he is remembering the taste of the food in sahyadri and in the 18th stanza as before to revel in this delights desire spring in his head now a rock 
ferocious beehive swarming with droning thoughts so what happened now his head turned into a vastness nest by thoughts but now there is no desire like before for any of these so these are the uh, this is the explanation of the first 80 18 stanza of the poem i hope you understood the stanza like stanza wise explanation here i am concluding Uh, since this is a long poem we can uh, we can take the rest of the portions in the next in our coming classes please do the homework and send me through whatsapp i'm concluding today's class thank you have a nice time